What is going on gaming nerds? Mystic Nightmare here and I'm bringing you a tutorial on the double jig step as well as trolling on Russian Fishing 4. Let's get started. Okay, so there's three types of boats. All right, all right, fine, guys. I know what you're all here for. You're all here for the jig step. If we're gonna do the jig step, then I need to make sure that I get into an area that has no wind, no drifting, a nice little lake, a lake like maybe say Quarry Lake. How's the weather looking up there? Looks like we're doing okay. There's not much wind. We should be okay. I need a nice glassy lake to really demonstrate this. Let's go ahead and travel over to Quarry Lake and we'll get talking about the jig step and then we'll come back and we'll talk about trolling. Okay, as you can see, we are out on Quarry Lake and I have got everything pretty much set up. Now, I've decided to go ahead and do jigging because jigging, the double step with the jigging is a little bit easier to do just because it's jigging. Um, it's really, really great to do the double jig step because basically you can try multiple baits at one time. You get the double jig step going, you get a little bit higher chance to catch fish when you've got the double jig step going, and you can try you know, two different baits and see uh, which two different baits that you think they might be biting on, they're actually biting on. So that's one of the great things about it. However, double jig stepping is not easy. When it comes down to the shallows, it's very difficult to do. When it comes down to like deep holes like this, which is why I'm on Quarry Lake right now for a 15, you know, a 15 meter hole, it's a lot easier because the angle that you're fishing at is a lot higher. Now, one of the most important things that that comes with the double jig stepping is you have to have your boat pretty much directly the back of your boat, I should say, or the engine directly facing where you want to cast. If your boat is cockeyed, if it's drifting, if it's being blown by wind, if it's turned sideways, then it'll screw up your jig step big time. Um, and it, the, I, I'll be honest with you guys, the jig, the double jig step is a very easy concept to get, but in the end, it's actually very hard to do. Now, just because you don't get the jig step doesn't mean that you're not actually still fishing properly. You can still catch fish this way. If you don't get the double jig step, that's fine, but your aim is to actually get the double jig step obviously. So the first thing you want to do is you want to press G and you want to turn off your boat. You can press K and you can go ahead and do the, the anchor or whatever. But the biggest thing that you want to make sure that you do is you want to press Y. And you got to wait for the engine to turn off for you to press Y because I think I just turned the engine back on. So let's go ahead and turn the engine off and then press Y. You need to be standing up for this and this is why. When you're sitting down with this, your rod only goes down so far. See how it stops right there? You want to be standing up so you can get your rod a little bit down, down a little bit lower. Basically, when it comes down to the double jig step, you're going to have to figure out what works for that area. You may have to increase your speed. You may have to, instead of doing one rotation, do two rotations. You may have to raise your rod up a little bit higher. You may have to raise it a or lower it a little bit lower. So when it comes down to it, there's a lot of different things that you need to try to try and, and and get the jig step to the double jig step to work so the first thing you want to do is stand up the next thing you want to do is press U, and you want to look at your hotbar keys and you want to place two rods that you're going to be using for the double jig step on your hotbar once you've done that i like to do mine on three or four i'm using my super duty jigging rods you can like i said you can do this with spoons spinners spinners you'd probably do a ghost jig step which means you won't actually get the jig step to come up but you're still doing the jig step spoons will work jigging really works really well with this but you want to press you want to press you and you want to put your two rods on probably next to each other and for me i've got my number three and I'm always going to press number three and put it on my left side, my left holder over here. And then I'm going to press number four and I'm going to put it on my right holder. What this allows me to do is three is on the left, like on the keyboard, four is on the right, like on the keyboard. And it makes it easy so I don't have to remember which number that I'm on. So I'm going to go ahead and press three and I'm going to go ahead and do a 100% cast. Now, most of the time I found that the best... The best retrieval speed that I use for this is 40. That means I'm reeling fast and I'm getting it off the ground. That's one of the biggest things when it comes down to the jig step. So I'll do a 40 speed just to get that that speed to get the, you know, the jig off the ground. Once I've got my number three out, I press number four. I get number four out. And you want to try and cast as straight as you can from the back of the boat if you can. 
Um, so I've got my number four out. I'm going to go ahead and tighten the line. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my number three. Now, here's the nice thing. You don't have to press zero to get these down or to, to put the rods down. All you have to do is press the next number. So I'm on number three now. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lower my rod a little bit and hopefully this will work. I'm going to press, I'm going to do two rotations. And I'm going to press four and do two rotations, three, two rotations, four, two rotations and this is all the jig step actually is see there's one rod that's on jig step there you go there's the double jig step right there like i said it's much easier to do it when you're in a nice deep hole because you've got a super high angle on your jig step um, or on your pole compared to where your bait is and this is really all it is is i'm, I'm doing two I'm doing it's hard to explain I'm doing two rotations because I'm picking up the slack that putting the rod down will actually cause as you can see I lost the jig step on that one um, but I'm picking up the slack that the rod actually gives me when I put the rod away and then I pick up the rod again it, it makes it, it it makes a little bit of slack in your line so I find that it, it works a little bit better when I do a, a double rotation instead of a single rotation you can do it with a single rotation it's not that difficult um, usually you just have to turn up your 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 speed on your retrieval but once you get to the point where you're actually picking up the um, the jig completely off the ground and it's actually just hanging off of the rod your jig step will stop obviously and that's what I'm doing right now my my bait is actually hanging in mid water right now it's not actually touching the bottom but I'm still doing the jig step because you can still use this to see if you can catch fish um, and I was actually practice on, practicing out here a little bit earlier and I caught a burbot off of it and now you see that what the line is doing the further up the bait gets uh, it's it kind of when you put the rod away and then you pick it up again like I said it, it it makes a lot of slack in the line and that's what you're trying to avoid as much as possible that's why some people put the tip of the rod super low to the ground uh, or super low to the water like this and then they'll do their jig step like this to try and you know combat some of that extra line that you've got going I have a hard time with it right next to the water like this I usually like to raise it a little bit higher that way I can make sure that I'm I'm seeing how much line I need to bring in I'm doing my double reel I'm getting that double jig step going and then eh, and see I lose it you lose it on one rod you'll keep it on the other rod just keep doing it eventually that second rod should line up and you should be able to start getting it again if not that's not that's okay it's not a big deal but that is the jig step for you now like I said before when it comes down to it deep holes are much easier to do the jig step on but if you are drifting if your wind is blowing you if you're on a river that drifts or whatever, then you're gonna have a problem with the jig step. It's not gonna be easy. One of the best things that you can do to combat that is just throw your anchor down if you're in a drift, let your boat um, basically take up all of the slack as it drifts and then just hang off of your anchor for a little bit and then figure out where exactly the back of your boat's pointing. If that's where you wanna cast, then you should be fine because now your boat is actually hanging from your anchor and your the back of your boat should stay in the same direction and that's a way to combat the drifting. So let's move on and talk about actual trolling. Okay, so as you can see, we're back at Volkov River. This is probably one of the best rivers to do any demonstrations on trolling. Uh, there's three types of boats. You got the, the little redneck dinghy here that I like to call it. You got the gray boat, which is the rescue boat. And then you've got the big boat, which is the super rescue boat. Now, basically, when it comes down to it, you've got three different speeds. The dinghy or the redneck dinghy is the slowest. You, the gray one is the next fastest. And then the red one is the ultimate fastest. Uh, fast this 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 anyway colors obviously you can see the colors uh, if you're colorblind like me I can't tell you what colors they are because I'm colorblind the biggest thing about these three boats is the impact on how your fishing is going to be as you can see the little dinghy the redneck dinghy is very skinny and very long when it comes down to the gray one you get a little bit wider of a body and then the red one is much higher on the sides as well as fatter this can actually affect your fishing. Uh, if you're trying to pull in a fish, it can be a little bit easier with the dinghy, but the dinghy is super slow. So if you're on a big like big lake like Quarry Lake or or Volkov Lake, not Quarry. Quarry is very small. 
a big river like Volkov, then it's probably better to use the red one, even though it may hinder you a little bit when it comes down to pulling in fish. All you really have to do is just, you know, slide up to the side of them. So basically, when it comes down to the impact of you getting fish in, you're going to have the least amount of trouble when it comes down to the dinghy. When it comes down to this one, yeah, a little bit more trouble, but it's still doable. And the red one, you kind of got to jockey a little bit to get your fish in, but it's not that big of a deal, really, especially if you're trolling and you're pulling in fish from behind, then the engine's really the only thing that gets in your way when you're doing that. So let's talk about turning radius. The people, people complain about the red one because it's the fastest and it has the biggest turning radius, but that's not actually true. Um, when you're going to full speed, then yes, the turning radius of it is very bad. <laughs> uh, the gray one isn't as bad and the dinghy actually turns quite quick, but I'm going to show you guys a little trick when it comes down to this. Let's just do a five day boat pass just because I said so. What I'm going to do is when you hold, and I, as you can hear, you probably can't even hear the probably can't even hear the motor very much. Hopefully it's not too loud over my voice. But as you're going and you press shift, you go faster. Okay, pressing shift goes faster. Now, when you're turning and you're going and you're pressing shift, as you can see, the turning radius is much tighter. If you're just trolling, if I press J and I just start trolling and I start turning, as you can see, the turning radius is quite wide it's actually pretty bad but as you can see i'm whipping this thing around like it's like it's on a dime okay it's not really hard to do all you got to do is just hold down shift okay press backwards right direction forward left direction and i've just turned it around in less than two or three seconds it's that easy so press forward right direction turn a little bit press back left direction or uh, yeah left direction and then forward right direction so it's basically like a 30 point turn in a in a car and that was at slow speed if i hold shift i can do it twice as fast so a lot of times when you're just trolling and you want to go down a straight line you don't want to have to turn this big huge turn you want to turn right where you're at so you can line up again right and that's how you can do it just hold shift down and just do you know forward and back opposite directions and do a 30 point turn and look how quickly i turned around so it's not really that big of a deal so let's talk about getting off the boat this actually seems like something i really shouldn't need to talk about however it i was very confused the first time i started using the boat because if the boat is in a wrong position or if you've got a rock underneath it or you're not up against the bank sometimes it won't tell you like right here see I can't get off the I can't actually get off the boat because it doesn't tell me in the upper right hand corner of the screen I can turn off the engine I can hit Y and sometimes that'll allow you to get off the boat see now now that I can actually target the beach then I can actually get off the boat but you should be able to get off the boat pretty much anywhere in the game uh, as long as you can you know pull up to the side of it a lot of times the best way to do it is just pull up to the side of it like this and you can easily get off the boat that way the closer your player is to where you're trying to get off the boat the better you're going to be see I, how quickly i got that get off the boat um sig uh, option in the upper right hand corner so that's the next thing now here's something that you need to understand um when it comes down to rods i'm going to drop my anchor real quick here when it comes to rods, if I've got a rod out and I've got a rod stuck on the side of the boat like this, if I get off the boat, if I get off the boat, I cannot pick that rod up. I'm pressing number three. I cannot pick that rod up. It's always going to say too far. That is something, in my opinion, that I think they should change because there's times when a bridge is in your way or something's in your way and you're trying to chase down a fish and you want to get off the boat and pick up your rod, but you can't do that. Unfortunately, you have to actually get back in the boat for me to actually pick up the rod again, which is kind of a pain. Um, yeah, that kind of sucks. I think they should change that. That's just my opinion. Let's talk about actual trolling now. So I have to pick up my... Okay, so you can troll with one, two, or three rods. Now, a lot of people think three rods is kind of a pain in the butt. I do too. I don't really do it, but you can do it. I've seen a lot of people do it. It's very simple. Press one of your numbers, cast it out. Make sure that you're... Uh, when you put... Let me put it this way. When... Whoa, okay. That was a quick catch. Uh, when you, what was I going to say? Uh, when you, uh, 
when you do trolling, the biggest thing that you want to make sure that you do is you need to put your reels on your hotbar because you can't put them down. Well, you can put them down, but you can't pick them back up unless they're on your actual hotbar to troll. That's one of the things that really confused me when I first started doing this. Um, so I usually just press U, you know, put whatever reels you need on your hotbar, and then that way you can actually pick them up. You can put them down, but you can't pick them up unless you have them on your hotbar. So I hit my number three, I cast it out there. Look at the left side or the right side, press zero, whichever direction you're closer to, that's the rot, that's the holder it'll put it down for, uh, or into. Press number four, cast it out. Look at that side. You don't actually have to look at that side once you've got one down because it's automatically going to put it in the other one. Then you can start trolling. You press J to troll. Then you can pick up a third rod and you can cast it out in the middle and you can actually hold this rod and you've got three rods out. The problem with this situation is what happens when one of the two rods that are actually attached to the boat are going to get a fish. You're going to have to reel in your, sen your center rod completely, which is probably why you want the retrieval speed at max. Once you reel in your center rod, you're going to have to put it away, and then you're going to have to pick up the rod that actually has the fish on it, and you're going to have to do this every single time one of these side, uh, these, these side poles actually catch something. So that can be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but if it's slow, if you're trolling and it's slow, you might want to try using that third rod just to try out different baits and lures and stuff like that to see what is actually catching and then switch out your rods um, to that new bait. So let's move on. When it comes down to running out of time, if you run out of time, you can press P. Now you're going to get a pop-up when you run out of time and that pop-up is going to be in the, in the lower right hand corner of the screen and it's going to say hey your time is almost up you've only got an hour left you can press the p button and if you've got more boat tickets you can choose one of those boat tickets and press ok when you do that as your time runs out on your previous ticket it'll automatically use the next ticket if you hit cancel and you don't do that then when your time runs out it's going to automatically reset you back to the to the main spawning area of that lake okay Good, let's move on. All right, so next let's talk about the positioning of your lure compared to your boat. Now, as you can see on the map, my boat looks like it's going into the eight meter hole. However, just because my boat is right here does not mean my lure is actually here. My lures have been cast way out there. As you can see, I got a fish on each one. My lures have been cast way out there so my lures aren't actually where the boat is. So even though I'm going into this eight meter hole, my, this is not where my lures actually are. My lures are actually way out here. Okay, so this is one of the biggest problem I see people have is they think just because their boat's right here that their lures are right directly over their, the deep spot that they want to you know fish in, and they're not. Right now, my lures are probably just barely starting to enter this hole, this eight meter hole right here, because of how far you actually have to cast to get the lures away from your boat. Now, when it comes down to casting distance, one of the biggest things that you kind of want to make sure make sure of is when you're using wobblers, like the ones that I'm using right now, when you're using wobblers and stuff like that, it's very important to understand that wobblers have a distance on them. So if I go into my baits and I look under, or my lures, where's my lures? And I look under my, my wobblers here, as you can see, they go down to a different depth, depth three meters, three meters, there's 1.2 meter. You need to give your wobblers a certain amount of distance of line so you can actually have them go down to those three meters. If you give them a short amount of line and they're supposed to go down to six meters, your line and your rod are going to are going to pull them up are going to keep them from going down there the, to the full six meters which is where you want them to be so you it's it's better when it comes down to wobblers to do a full 120 percent cast when it comes down to spoons you can do like a 75 percent cast spinners don't need a ton of room so you can do probably like a 60 percent cast when it comes down to spinners and stuff like that um and by the way i just 
just to let you guys know, if you're if you're dragging a fish like I just was, this Atlantic salmon, um, and you're finding that your reel's being pulled out, your line's being pulled out, you can just hit G and turn off your engine. However, you can't hit G again and start it with the lure in your hand or with the rod in your hand, basically. Um, as you can see, I can press J, and at that point, because I'm not reeling, I'm okay. But when you've got a fish on, you can't do that. Um, you can press G when you don't have a fish on, but as soon as you have a fish on, then you can't, these, these options don't, you know, don't come to you. So what you're going to have to do is when you get a fish on, let's say that I'm parked right here and I'm dragging in a fish and I've got a super heavy fish that is starting to pull my line and I want to chase that fish down so he doesn't spool me. The best thing that you can do is just put your rod down, press J which will start your engine and start you moving and then pick your rod back up and start at that point when you're trolling you can actually control the boat and you can turn the boat around you can continue reeling and then you can shift reel which is super fast reeling once you get lined up let's say my my loop my lines way out there once i get lined up with with uh with my line then i can actually start reeling in and start chasing down the fish. This is one of the biggest things that's an advantage to trolling when it comes down to trolling is you can actually chase down fish and you can continue you can continue to chase them down without having the threat of being spooled unless that fish is running like a bat out of hell. Um, it is possible to get spooled when you're trolling but that fish needs to be moving and he has to take out all of your line and if you've got a ton of line on then you're okay. Uh, so you can chase them down and that's a huge advantage when it comes down to trolling because you can actually catch like two or three times bigger fish than what your gear can handle because you can chase them down. All right, next let's talk about turning around while you're trolling. Now I see a lot of people, they'll just keep J on and they'll keep trolling and they'll take a big, huge you know, turning radius and try and turn around. At that point, it can be a little frustrating because if you're in a specific line like I'm at right now, one of my favorite places on Volkov to troll is up and down this fold in the map. I absolutely love it, but I hate getting lined up for it when I have to make this huge turning radius. So what you can do is you can actually, my lines are out and I've got a fish on. Again, I should really probably use bait that's not actually, I got two fish on, holy crap. Okay, as I was saying, <laughs> with your lines out, you can actually turn on a dime, and just because your lines are out doesn't mean you're gonna get all caught up and tangled. However, it doesn't mean that you're not going to as well. So what I wanna do is I wanna turn around and I wanna get as close as I can to this fold right here. So I'm gonna use my special turning. I'm gonna hit shift and I'm just gonna do a 30 point turn and turn directly around. Now this doesn't seem like it might be very special, but it actually is. So as you can see, I'm right on my fold again. And I just got to line up the bottom of my screen with the boat. Now, once I've done this and I start trolling again, there is something that you need to watch out for. First of all, if my lines are out, as you can see, my lines aren't taut and my tip of my poles aren't actually being bent. That's okay because eventually they will be bent because I'm catching up with my lures that are actually probably right under me right now. However, this is something that you need to kind of watch out for because you see how the pole's not bent? There is a possibility that even though the lines go through the boat, the lure can get caught on the boat and you can actually be dragging the lure underneath the boat. So one of the things that you want to do at that point is you want to actually reel in at that point and then you want to actually recast once you reel in. If you find that your tip of your pole isn't being bent, more than likely your lure is actually caught on the tip of your boat and is being dragged. So if you're going to do one of those special point turns with lines out, you can do them. Your lines will go through the boat, but your lure may be caught on the boat and you may need to recast it. I've actually drug Volkov not knowing that that could happen for almost an hour straight not catching anything because my freaking lures were stuck to the bottom of my boat. So that's something you might want to actually be, you know, aware of. All right, next let's talk about the pros and cons of doing trolling. Now, as I told you before, you can actually chase down fish, fish which is one of the biggest pros of trolling. However, one of the bigger one of the bigger cons of it, I guess, is drifting. Now, when it comes down to drifting, 
it can be good on rivers and I'll show you drifting on a, on like Sura River in a minute but when it comes down to parking your boat and actually fishing a certain area on a river or a lake that has wind going on or you've got a drift that can actually cause a problem now this is something that I believe the devs need to fix because when you drop your anchor in real life Basically, you wait till the anchor hits the ground and then you tie your anchor off onto the moors that are on the side of your boat so you don't have any slack. However, when it comes down to the game, the devs have kind of allowed the anchor to be a little bit too long. Uh, so when I drop down the anchor by pressing K and I hit G to turn off my boat, as you can see, I'm still drifting. Now, right about now is where it should stop but it doesn't so what you actually have to do is you have to line up your boat and put down your anchor to where you think that you'll drift to so the boat can actually stop and then you can actually get some good fishing out of it i don't know how many times that i've been close to like weeds and stuff like that when i'm trying to fish for pike and i'm waiting for the boat to stop and i'm continue waiting i'm still waiting the anchor is down and i'm still drifting they really need to fix this because boats don't drift this far eventually when the anchor hits as you can see the anchor has now been caught the anchor is attached to the front of your boat so when your anchor hits the front of your boat is going to stay in position and the drift is going to con continue to press the to push the back of your boat around now this is fine when you're looking for a little channel like this right here where I normally fish for pike on Volkov. And as you can see, I'm still okay to be casting anywhere right here, but my boat, the front of my boat is staying in place, the back of my boat is drifting over. So you're going to need to take this into account when it comes down to stopping the boat and actually drifting. But you want to make sure, or drifting I should say, stopping the boat, dropping your anchor, letting it drift to where it's in position for you to actually fish. This can be supremely frustrating when you're trying to fish between two real narrow areas like this and you're not exactly sure where to put your boat because you have to wait for the boat to finish drifting to figure out where you're at and then you have to reposition. Once you're close to where you're at, as you can see, I'm right here, but I'm a little bit too close. I want to be backed up a little bit further. So I'm going to go ahead and release my anchor and I'm going to probably come right out about here and then probably go a little bit further this direction, press K, drop my anchor, press G, turn off the motor. And at this point, I could probably drift right into the center of that um, of that waterway, if you will. So this is one of the cons that I think they really need to fix um, in the boat uh, and trolling. And it kind of really irritates me because I've had some frustrating times trying to kind of park my boat in a certain direction and a certain angle to do some fishing and I'm not able to actually do it. The next con that comes with it is when it comes down to feeder fishing. So if you get on a boat, there's a glitch in the game that irritates me to no end. I pull out a fishing rod or a feeder fishing rod and if you watch I'll go ahead and I'll cast this feeder out now normally when you pick up your feeder rods you pick it up nice and smooth you pick it up your your character doesn't jerk or anything else like that now this this is probably worse for float fishermen but when it comes down to it, when you get on the boat and you get off of the boat, it creates a, a bug in the game where when you pick up your rod, your character for some reason jerks the living hell out of the front of your rod. I don't know why. See that big huge jerk that it did? That's just annoying. That shouldn't be in the game and it's part of the trolling and it's a little bit of a bug that happens. But look at that, just that huge massive jerk like that. Now when it comes down to float fishermen, this is the worst for them because what happens if your line is taut or close to being taut on your float and you've got a fish and you're just, you got a fish playing with your, with your float and you're just trying to pick up the rod to get ready to jerk on the float so you can catch the fish. Well, as soon as you pick up the rod after you've gotten off of the boat, it's going to jerk the hell out of the rod, which is going to jerk the, the, the float, and you can lose the fish that way. In my opinion, they really need to fix this on the, uh, on, the tr on the boats. I don't know exactly why this happens. You can reset it by logging out and logging back in, but that's really, really, really annoying. So usually when it comes down to float fishing, to fix that, all I'll do is I'll throw out my, my float. Why is this so slow? Oh, it's because I got my retrieval speed down. I'll throw out my float, like if I'm using a Bolognese rod, I'll throw out my float and then I'll just, instead of locking the reel, 
I'll just leave the reel open. I think I've got a clip on this Balinese rod. So I'll leave the reel open and then I'll put the rod down. And by having the reel open, when I jerk up, because I have, see all that line? And then I can go ahead and close the line or I can close the reel and I can go ahead and reel it in to where I'm getting close to the actual float and then I can you know do my jerking at that point but I just leave the rod open and this really only works with Balinese rods or if you are using a telly stick and you're casting really close to the shore then you've got a lot of extra line and that may actually help but if you don't have a lot of line then you got that huge jerk ah see that's how slow it's supposed to be when you pick up the telestick rod i'm not exactly sure why it works on the telestick rod but it doesn't on the balinese rod or anything with the reel so that's kind of a con when it comes down to the trolling boat it it, it causes that glitch in the game for anything that has a reel on it Okay, as you can see, it is early morning and we are on Seversky Donuts, or as I like to call it, Donuts, because it makes me hungry for donuts every time I say it. Now, most of your drifting is going to be basically jig-based. So, Carolina rig, uh, regular jig, um, Texas rig, whatever. You're just going to take one of your soft lures and you're going to throw it out there, and you're going to let it sink to the bottom. You're going to lock your reel and you're going to put your reel down. Now, when it comes to drifting... This is actually fantastic because all you're doing is instead of actually reeling in your reel or your lure to attract the fish, all you're doing is letting it drag the bottom of the lake or the river, utilizing the speed of your boat and it's drifting. As you can see, we're drifting along the way. Now, the reason I wanted to talk about this, and by the way, fish actually love this, so don't skip over doing this on some of these rivers because it's amazing when it comes down to the fishing. But as you can see, we're drifting along, and what I wanted to actually talk about is the direction of your boat is facing. This is just a little tip, little trick from me. Um, I see a lot of people that actually drift with the boat facing forward. And the reason they do that is because you have a lot less in your way when it comes down to reeling in a fish. However, when it comes down to drifting, you're kind of at the mercy of the river. If the current is going this direction, it's going to run me into this beach over here. Okay. So if you turn your, your, your boat around, and as you drift this way, it may seem a little bit wonky, but it actually works great because if I get going a little bit too far to the right or to the left, and it's gonna run me into the beach, all I have to do is just start the engine and I can move over, go forward a little bit, move over, and then I can just turn off the engine again and I can adjust how far I'm drifting out into the river. Now, another thing that's really cool about this is if you're actually getting close to a beach or something like that, and you're just about to run into it, what you can also do instead of actually repositioning your boat, you can just press K and drop your anchor. Now by pressing K and dropping your anchor, what that's gonna do is it's going to stop the front of your boat but it's going to continue drifting the back of your boat. So your boat will actually line up with the direction that the drift is going. So as you can see, my boat is now stopped and the back of the boat will drift to the point where it's actually facing the direction of where the water is drifting to. And then once I do that, I can hit K again, and then I can pick up my anchor, and I can just continue drifting. And that's another way that you can actually control the boat. So it may be in your benefit to have the front of the boat going upstream and dealing with a little bit of the wonky wonkiness of it. But at the same time, it'll allow you to easily adjust your boat and the direction that you know you're drifting to so that's something that could be really great now there's one final thing that i want to show you and that is what i like to call sit uh um sit trolling but you're actually not trolling it's basically just sitting in a boat and that's back over at volkov river and it's something that i really enjoy doing with xander so let's jump back over there i'll show you guys basically what i do over there and what i've actually come to really truly enjoy because it allows me to sit in one hole and just fish that one hole i'll be right back 
Okay, as promised, we are out of Volkov River. As you can see, I am over here in, what, D4. This is the small, shallow little area that has great fishing for Xander. This is one of my favorite places to fish. Now, basically what I do is, all I do is I stop the motor, I drop the anchor, I stand up, I pull out one of my jigs, and what will happen is the front of my boat will stay where it is, the back of the boat will continue to drift, and I'll pretty much end up drifting sideways. I look at the map, I show which way that I'm actually facing, I do a nice long cast out here, and this is what I do for Xander, and it's kind of like sit trolling, you're not actually trolling, but you're sitting. And all I can do... All, all I'm able to do here is just basically cast out as far as I can and I can go ahead and fish through this hole from the boat and this makes it super nice because instead of me actually having to troll through the the middle of this hole and then turn around at the end of it and troll through it again and then turn around at the end of it again which only takes like a few minutes I can actually sit here and just drag my jig or my lure or anything else straight through this hole and it makes it really super nice because I'm at the hole I don't have to keep turning around. I don't have to continuously watch where I'm trolling. And I can just sit here and I can just jig for, I can get cats here. You can get, I'm actually doing that way too fast. I was wondering why it was going so fast. You can get cats out here. You can get Xander out here. You can get perch, pike and stuff like that. And all I do is I just jig through this hole. I just see how my boat's moving now. That's another thing that they need to do. As soon as I put my anchor down, it takes about a minute or so. And then your boat kind of catches up with the drift and it kind of starts turning sideways like that. Um, but this is great because you can just sit out here and you can you can just pull your lures and your jigs and stuff through the hole. You can catch anything you want. You can do jig steps, you can do speed ups, whatever you want to do. You can use lures, um, wobblers. Uh, I've even caught a few things on top wobblers before. They're usually pike, but I've tried top wobblers here. But I usually find that jigs are probably the best here. And this is just you sitting in the boat. You know, you do have to pay the rental fee for the boat and everything else, but it allows you to concentrate directly on this hole and not have to worry about turning around multiple times. So if you guys enjoyed the video and you learned something, throw me a like. And don't forget to finger my bell. That way you guys can be notified when I put out a brand new video. Um, no matter what you do though, subscribe. I really appreciate it. Uh, keep gaming. Keep doing it midnight. Have a blast. We'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care. Have a good one and bye-bye.